Welcome back everyone. I had a viewer request to give a tutorial on how to make a minimalistic map design that you could sell on eBay or Etsy. According to a video I watched on YouTube, you can make $6,435 per month or more creating designs that look something like this. I'll let you decide whether or not that's true, but I'll leave a link to the video in the description. Let me show you how I did this in Affinity Photo 2. I started by going to a website called snazzymaps.com. I clicked on the Explore Styles tab and scrolled through the many options until I found one that had a somewhat minimalistic style. I chose this one here called Navigation, but you can pick whichever you like. The default map location is New York City. I had already zoomed into Staten Island. But you can use the search icon in the top right corner of the map and type in whatever location you please. All right, next, I'll click the green download icon in the middle and I'll set the dimensions to the maximum of 1000 by 1000 pixels. And then I'll click download image at the bottom. Okay, the next thing I did was to open up Affinity Photo to this nice image of a woman's profile that I got from pixabay.com. I'll leave a link to this in the description as well. Then I went to File in the menu, scrolled down to Place, selected the image I just downloaded from Snazzy Maps and dragged it onto my canvas. To help place the map image in a nice spot, I slid the opacity slider down a bit so I could see the woman underneath and then used the Move tool to drag the corner nodes to make it a little bigger and move it into place. All right, that looks good. I'll raise the opacity slider back up and then hide the map for a bit by clicking the little dot on the right side of the layer. Now, I'm going to turn this image into a silhouette. So, I want to make a really nice and smooth selection of the woman. To do this, I'll grab my pen tool from the left-hand toolbar and click around the edges of her face to make a series of little dots. I'll speed this up a bit so as not to bore you. Just try to be as precise as possible. I'm actually going to select the background area here, so I'll click around the corners as well. Then, to get a nice smooth curve, I'll go to the Node tool and use my cursor to drag a box around all the nodes. Next, I'll click the Smooth button, which is the second icon to the right of the word Convert. Affinity Photo will figure out the best curve between the nodes. To help make your curve more precise, you can use the little handlebars to change the curve. If you click and hold Option or Alt, you can drag one side of the handlebar without affecting the other. But just look at how nicely this turned out without adjusting much around her face. All right, now that I've made a good trace, I'll go back to the pen tool on the left-hand toolbar and click it. Then I'll go up to the top toolbar and press on Selection. Out come those little dotted marching ants outlining the selected area. To get rid of the background, simply press the delete key. Okay, now I'll make sure that the woman layer is selected and then I'll go down to the FX button at the bottom of the layers panel. I'll select color overlay and click on the checkbox next to it. Then I'll click on the black color box and use the color wheel to change the color. I'll go with this skin color for now, but might change it later. Okay, let's see that map again by clicking on the little dot to the right of the layer. Then I'll click back on the woman layer, go to selection in the menu and scroll down to selection from layer. You'll see those dotted ants come back up. Now I'll go back and select the map layer and then I'll click the mask button in the bottom of the layers panel. All right, I think this is looking pretty good, but I want to see the color of the silhouette below. What I'm going to do next is pretty destructive. So I'll first click Command or Control J to duplicate the layer with the mask on it. 
Then, I'll turn that layer off by clicking the little dot. Now, I'll go to the top layer, right-click on it, and scroll down to Rasterize to put this all into one pixel layer. I want to get rid of these rivers first to see how that looks. So, I'll click on the little blue wand-shaped Flood Select tool in the left-hand toolbar, and then drag it across a small selection of the water area of the map. This will select everything of the same grey colour. Now, I'll click Delete. I'll keep doing this in other areas. Just click or drag the cursor just a little over the grey area and then click Delete. You can do this in small selection until you get it all. Now, if you want to get rid of some of these other map details to reveal more of the silhouette below, you can also go to the lasso-shaped freehand selection tool to encircle all of the areas on the map that you don't want to see. Once you've completed the curve, just click that good old delete key once more. All right, next I want to add a background color. So, I'll go to Layer in the menu and select New Fill Layer, and then I'll drag and drop that below the Silhouette layer. Then, I'll go to the little hamburger icon at the top right of the color panel and change it to Wheel. You can change the color by using the little sliders on the wheel and triangle. For now, I'll just keep it white, but I'll probably change it later. Next, I'll select the Map layer and then go to the Adjustments button at the bottom of the Layers tab and select Recolor. Then I'll drag and drop the adjustment layer onto the map so it only affects this one layer. I can use the Recolor slider to change the black and grey areas of the map to whatever colour I want. I'll go with red. OK, I think this would look better with a black background. So I'll select the white fill layer at the bottom of the layer stack and use the colour wheel to change the colour to black. Yup, that looks better. Now, let's add some text on here. I'll go to my A-shaped artistic text tool in the left-hand toolbar and then drag the cursor to size the text. I'll click on the text color box in the top toolbar and use the color wheel to change the color from black to white. Then I'll type in something like Staten Island Girl and move it somewhere in the black area. All right. Now a common poster size has a 16 by 20 aspect ratio. So I'll go to the crop tool in the left hand toolbar and then change the mode from unconstrained to custom ratio. Then in the boxes to the right, I'll type in 16 by 20 units. I'll move the crop box around to where it looks best to me and then click apply. Okay, one last thing and then I'll let you go. I don't think I like the colour of the silhouette, but I can easily change it. To do this, I'll just select the layer and then click on the FX icon to the right. This will bring up the FX panel. I'll click on the colour box and use the colour wheel to change the colour to white. There, that looks much better to me. Like I said, I'm not sure you can make money selling these, but feel free to watch the video from the guy who says you can and let me know if you find your path to riches. All right, that's about it for today. If you learned something and want to see more of this kind of content, please click those like and subscribe buttons. And if you're feeling generous, this channel runs on caffeine. There's a link to buy me a cup of coffee in the descriptions. Not necessary, but certainly appreciated. Have a great day, everyone.